Hello everyone and welcome back. And if this is your first time joining us, hello, I'm Miss Benita. And like you, I'm at home. My two cats are keeping themselves company. And I'm keeping myself busy as well by creating these videos for you. Today, this is the third video in chapter one. And the unit that we are studying is ecosystem restoration. And we're going to be talking about matter. So let's take a look at what we've learned in the last video. We got a message from uh, the group that we've been working with, Natural Resources Rescue, and they have let us know that there is a problem in our reforested site. The jaguars and the sloths there are not growing and thriving. We practice by being uh, ecologists and sharpening our observation skills with a couple of different ecosystems. We looked at and observed these pictures, but we also try to look for the connections within the ecosystem. Then we ended our video day with reading this book. We read the first half of Matter Makes It All Up. This video is broken up into two activities. And the first activity is discussing matter and molecules. You saw these words in the book that we read. If you're following along in the packet, you'll want to look at the last set of pages, packet pages 15 through 17. Now, based on what you read, what is matter? You may want to pause the video and look at the book again or look at your packet. This is what the book said. An ecologist is a scientist who studies ecosystems. You know that. To an ecologist, the parts of an ecosystem have something very important in common. In fact, you could say they are all the same deep down. All the parts of an ecosystem are made of matter. Matter makes up the air, water, soil, rocks, animals, plants, and everything else. Going back to our question, what is matter? Seems like it's a lot of things, like everything water, rocks, plants, living things. Now let's take a look at this word, matter. We've said it a lot and we have read it a lot as well. There are a lot of uh, different ways to use the word matter besides how we've been using it in science. Let's take a look how we use the word matter every day. We say things like, what's the matter? It doesn't matter to me. No matter what, I am still your friend. But when we look at the word matter, when we are studying science, matter means the stuff that things are made of. Ice cream cones are made of matter. The trees outside are made of matter. Our toys, our bicycles, our clothes are made of matter. Everything that has a liquid, solid, or gas form, all those things are made of matter. Let's take a look at what the book has said. Matter is made up of tiny atoms that are too small to see. There are many different kinds of atoms, and these atoms can combine to form a huge number of different kinds of molecules. Individually, atoms and molecules are too small to see. However, billions and trillions of atoms and molecules together can make up a rock, a tree, a bird, or even an alligator. That is page five of your book and also page 15 of the packet. Here's another word that we need to take a look at. Molecule. A group of atoms joined together in a particular way. Let's take a closer look at molecule. The book says, 
from page seven, this image shows a model of a molecule that makes up muscles. We can't really show what the molecules look like. The individual molecules are too small to see, even with a microscope. That being said, scientists create drawings to help represent the molecules they are studying. This is a molecule representing water. And this is a molecule representing sucrose. Sucrose is one of the molecules that make up our table sugar. So we're gonna make a chart to track our ideas about matter. And you can do this in your packet as well. What are some of the things mentioned in the book that are made of matter? Again, the book says, all the parts of an ecosystem are made of matter. Matter makes up the air, water, soil, rocks and animals, and plants and everything else. What would you add here? What is made of matter? We know everything in the ecosystem is made of matter. Yes, including all plants and animals. I'll add plants and animals to our matter chart. What are you adding to yours? We know matter is made up of billions of molecules grouped together. Let's add the word molecule and a drawing that represents a water molecule. You remember we had that drawing earlier? Why don't you add that to yours if you don't already have it? You can pause the video to do that. For example, let's zoom in on a muscle. The muscle is made up of smaller parts. These parts are made up of even smaller parts, which are made up of molecules. These molecules are made up of atoms. It's all matter. Let's add the word atom and a circle that represents an atom. Like this. You can do that on yours as well. See how I am using the book? As I return to the pages I read, I find more information. The more I reread a page, the more information connects together. Based on what we read in Matter Makes It Up, what can we say about all organisms? Let's think for a moment. And if you have a family member working with you, you might want to turn to that family member right now and talk about this question. Here are some questions that might help you uh, think about our first question, right? What are all organisms made of? What is matter? Yep, this is a big idea, which we call a key concept. Everything is made of matter. Matter is made up of molecules. All right, you got that one down. Now on to activity two, where we will be synthesizing ideas about how animals grow. Ready? Turn to 17, page 17 in your packet. We will use this page to synthesize information from the book. Let's review the directions. <clears throat> I'll read them out loud. Number one, reread pages eight through 11 of Matter Makes It All Up and think about the question below. Record information in the boxes that could help answer the question. Connect ideas together to come up with a new understanding that answers the question. Record the new understanding in the box below the arrow. Question, how do animals grow? So we're gonna take a look at the book and write three different ideas that are going to help us weave them together for a new understanding. Let's talk about the information we read that relates to the question, how do animals grow? We will think about how matter and molecules are related to animals growing. Go through the book one more time and fill these pages out. You may want to pause the video to complete this section. Let's take a look at page nine of the book. Let's read the second sentence. 
It gives us important information about how animals grow. And we'll do the first one together. It says, since an animal is made of matter, when it grows, it needs to add more matter to its bones, muscles, and other parts. This part is really important here. When it grows, it needs to add more matter. In the table, we can write the sentence and the page number where we found it. Page nine, the sentence is, since an animal is made of matter, when it grows, it needs to add more matter to its bones, muscles, and other parts. If you haven't paused the video yet to complete this page, this is a great time to do so. All right, we're back. How do animals grow? What did you find in the book? Oh, okay. Here are some things I recorded in my pack. From page 10, I found the new matter needed for growth comes from what animals eat because food is also made of matter. Did you find that? How about this one? Same page, right? Page 10, inside the animal's body, the food molecules are broken down and used to build new molecules that make up bone, blood, muscles, skin, and other body parts. Page 11. Let's see. Remember this page? There was a, a bold word in there, right? Energy. Let me read that sentence. More important, the animal uses some of the food matter to get energy. Animals need energy to move and do all the things animals do. We're gonna come back to that later. When we are reading a science text, it can be helpful to think about different ideas in the book and how they are connected. This can help us to understand what we have read and to connect it to science ideas we are learning. Connecting different ideas is called synthesizing. This looks familiar to you, right? Let's take a look at the word synthesize. To put together multiple pieces of information in order to understand something. Let's think about this word. If you think of your ideas as yarn and the needles as your brain, when we read, we take these different ideas and we weave them together. We weave them together to make new understanding. So this hat represents the metaphor for synthesizing. This hat is made of different colors of yarn and it represents the different ideas that we, once we read them, our brains have put them together to create a new understanding. How are you thinking about a new understanding? How do animals grow? Make sure you record your thinking. This is also a great time to show the packet to a family member to see if you would like to add any of their thinking. All right, it's a wrap for today, everyone. Let's go back and look at the things that we've learned. We've taken a closer look at the book and learned about matter and atoms and molecules. We've made a matter chart to represent what is made of matter and what matter is made up of. And we've taken our ideas together and synthesized them into some new understanding. And when I see you next time, we will take a look at those new ideas and go deeper. 
All of these ideas will help us understand the problem that's happening in our reforested area and why our jaguars, hawatis, and sloths are not growing and thriving. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope that you have a lovely day and that you and your family can share your ideas together. Thanks for now. Bye.